Hey guys, it's Mrs. Conway. So we just finished up a unit where we learned how to write the equation of a line in slope-intercept form, and we really emphasize slope-intercept form, but actually there are several forms of linear equations. And so today what we're going to do is we're going to kind of go into what point-slope form of a linear equation is. So the purpose of point-slope form is to help us highlight the slope and a point on the linear equation, like on the graph. And so this can actually be helpful if you're given the point and a slope to write the equation really quickly. Um, so this is actually an alternative method to do some of what we did in the last unit. So let's look here. Point slope form of a linear equation is, and then this is where we're going to fill in what it is. So point slope form is y minus, and then this is where we're going to put y one, which is this y1 that's in the point, equals our slope, so we put m right here, times x minus, and then that's where we're going to put x1. And in this case, x1 is referring to the x value of the point that we're given. So everything I did in blue won't change, although the minus might become a plus. But the purple will be y1, and our slope, m, will be the number that our slope is. So let's look at some examples. Down here, I have, seven, I have six equations. Which ones are in point-slope form? So let's determine where the equation is point-slope form. Here we've got y minus 5 equals a number, which would be our slope, times x plus 2. So this is in point-slope form. How about this one? x and y are on the same side of the equal sign, not in point-slope form. Same thing here, x starts with 2x, that's, point-slope form is always going to start with y and then plus or minus a number, so this is a no. Here, that's in slope-intercept form, you should know that one, so it's not in point-slope form, because the only time point-slope and slope-intercept are the same is um, for like y equals x. Okay, so here we have y plus 5. That's still in point-slope form because this would just mean that our y value was negative 5, so two negatives made a positive. And then here we've got y minus 4, and then the thing that might trip you up on this one is there's just a negative here, but that just means that m is negative 1. So this is still in point-slope form. So hopefully you can kind of see what point-slope form is going to look like. It's going to look like y plus or minus a number equals the slope, parentheses, x, plus or minus a number. So let's do a couple. It says identify the slope, oh sorry, we're going to look at these equations and find the point and the slope from the equation. So here we've got y plus 3, that means that y is going to be negative 3, because it's always the opposite of what it says here. m is going to be negative 2 over 3, and then x is going to be negative 3 because it says plus 3. So it's going to be the point negative 3, negative 3, and our slope is negative 2 thirds. Here we've got y plus 2, so y is going to equal negative 2. Our slope is going to be negative 5, and x should equal now positive 1 because it says minus 1. So if it says minus here, then x is positive. So the slope is negative 5, and our point is 1, negative 2. All right, so hopefully you're starting to see where these numbers are coming from. And I don't know if you noticed, but we haven't had to do an awful lot of actual arithmetic yet. So the only other thing we're going to do in this lesson is I'm just going to have you practice putting um, points and slopes into point-slope form. So remember, point-slope form is y subtract y1 equals m times x subtract x1. So when we go to fill these in, we just might want to note this is x1 and y1, and our slope is m. So now we're just going to come down here and we're going to put it in. We've got y subtract 1 equals 1 half from our slope times x subtract 3. And that's all there is to it. I'm done. I've written the equation in point-slope form. I didn't have to actually do any math.
if you're having trouble following here, let me highlight some things for you. So you can see that our this negative one comes from this one right here. This one half comes from our slope of one half. And this three is from x1 being three. Okay, last one. Maybe try this one on your own before you check the answer. So hit pause really quick. Try number 11. Okay, now let's see if you got it right. X1, Y1, M. So it's going to be Y. Subtract a negative 1. So I'm just going to put plus 1 because there's no point in putting minus a negative. Equals 6 over 5 times X. Subtract negative 5 is the same thing as plus. And that is it. So now you have a Delta Math assignment to do. It's going to kind of walk you through some of this again, make sure you really understood it, and then you'll do some practice problems. And that's all we're going to do for this lesson. So good luck.